my good gal, she loved me and all I keep on trying. Yes, keep on trying. Well, I just keep on trying till it drives my blues away. You tell me that you love me, love me for myself. Trying by the Tampa Kit, and Tampa Kit uh, only recorded a few songs, but in a way he was uh, more known as Charlie McCoy, which was his real name, and he was especially known for his mandolin playing. And he was the brother of Joe McCoy, who used to be married to uh, Memphis Minnie, and recorded with her until the 1935, I guess. And it's a nice slide song in open D tuning. And I'm capered on the second fret, so we sound like we're in open E. And uh, of course, when I say the, f the third fret, it's in fact the fifth fret, but we regard the capo as a zero fret. Uh, another fine version is the one by uh, Mike Dowling. And he, record he recorded it twice, and you'll find links in the video description. And I took a bit of everything, uh, mainly from um, Mike Dowling, because he's a fantastic playing. And his slide playing is very, um, well, very special. He uses slide only sparingly, which you can hear. Um, I tapped out the whole song. I wrote the lyrics under the tap, so that will make things easier to learn it. 
and open the video description if you're interested in the tab. It's part of a gigantic pack of more than 30 tabs for only 12 and a half euros, which is practically nothing. <laughs> All right, let's uh, start with the introduction. Yeah, I want, I want to say also, when you see in the tab, the number four, with, with a, uh, a slide sign, I'm usually not sliding to the fourth fret, which sounds like this. I'm sliding in between. Let's say 375, 380. And it uh, mimics more like this, a bent third note. And uh, the fourth fret sounds um, less bluesy. That's, that's a slight difference and if you listen to the recordings of Blind Willie Johnson all his slide pieces are in open D tuning and he was blind he couldn't see whether he went to the between the third and the fourth fret or just above the fourth fret so and he's definitely playing in between the two frets it's more bluesy um, what I wanted to say also uh, <clears throat> This song has a swing feel, of course, so we trying as much as possible to accent the second and the fourth beat and often do that with muting. With palm muting. Also, the angle of my temp is sometimes different. I play with a mixture of sometimes flesh like this and sometimes I tilt it slightly and you get a sharper sound. My nail of the temp on the side is, um, you can see, it's filed off so that it slides off the string. It doesn't hook behind the string, it slides off. And so by tilting you can vary your sound there. All right, <clears throat> let's start with the introduction. So, slide, and I'm muting that with my picking finger. Another thing I forgot to say, I'm an adept of clean slide playing. And also, I think the slide on the third finger for this kind of songs with a lot of fingering is better than the slide on the pinky. Because all those uh, chord positions, like this one, <coughs> The G, it really sits under your fingers. If you're going to have to do that with your third finger and your slide on the pinky, well, you're going to have to twist your hands in unnatural positions. Also, uh, not in this song, but in many open D and open G songs, you get for the four quarter bar. You see, the pinky is just under that. Uh, Gonna have to do that with your third finger it's uh, gonna cause you a lot of pain well in my case anyway I don't say you have to do it but it makes things easier by the way Mike Dowling also uses his third finger and I rest my two fingers pinky and third uh, second finger on the slide and I always keep my thumb behind and it's in contact with the, uh, the neck on the back so that my hand can give you a nice even vibrato like this. So the temp is just below that. And my index finger is dragging over the strings and muting the unwanted sounds of this uh, that the slide makes. See, there's a definite difference there. But that's a no choice, of course. I don't say you have to do that. There's a lot of slide players that don't mute. Uh, Raikou is a good example of that. Uh, nobody's going to call him as a bad slide player. Okay, so we're sliding to the 3.8 fret. And I'm muting that with my pick fingers. I'm, after I pay, played it, I rest it on the string. So otherwise it sounds like... No 
notice that, that bouncy feeling. And that's all done with muting with the uh, picking fingers. Same with the temp. Not like that, but I rest the temp after I pick it. up the singing on the last half of the beat of the last beat of the introduction well all I do and then I do a sort of rocking motion with that G chord and notice I'm, I'm using flesh here if I would use that angle that's too too loud uh, to sing behind in my case anyway well all I do so with a jump up and down. Well, all I do. Double bass there and slide to the seventh fret. This cinnamon. And here I'm using an alternating between the sixth and the fifth string. You can do whatever there. Uh, you can play like that. Or. Partial, fourth, fifth fret, and going down. Very typical move. And then we're going to the G, which is the third fret, open, first fret, open, and second fret. And we can, of course, use the pinky to rock between the third fret, first ring, and the second fret. I'm changing the chord to an uh, A flat diminished and I'm using also a different position you see I'm using the pinky on the third fret first string and the second finger on the second fret third string and the first finger on the second fret fifth string so treble strings while I'm muting the bass after I picked it with the palm. Yes, keep on trying that third beat then uh, as it's uh, well it's ringing its full length. Keep on trying and that's our signature lick. to the third fret, not the fourth fret, but the third fret. Tri um, triplet, pull off on the third fret. To the A chord, first fret, second, a uh, third string, and the fourth string on the second fret. That's all. And here I'm really muting the second and the fourth beat. And that 
we're going back to the to that uh, A and and then I'm picking up the fourth string with the index so that's the last beat of the tenth measure and here I'm muting after I picked it index middle sorry index stamp index bar 11 bar 11 one more time Get really that swing feel there. Back to that A chord. All right. Um, that's it for the first verse. And all the verses are the same except the first uh, four measures, which are different and which I transcribed in the tap, of course. Uh, and the second verse goes like this. to the fourth and fifth fret and adding and here it's handy that you have your pinky free so not a, a slide on it because we're going to the seventh fret with that third uh, finger gonna be hard that's the, the measure 13 slide get to the seventh fret different transition to that uh, G chord. That's the same as before, and where you have a different signature lick. I use this only once. Slide to the third fret. as in the first verse. So one more time with vocals. You tell me that you love me, love me for myself. Is the <clears throat> muting of the bass also? I'm playing that whenever I'm able to do it. That country blues bass, open and then mute it. It's not like that. Mute it with the right palm all the time. No, open and and you see my hand turns like that. I don't do that with the slides on the seventh fret here. What is different uh, in the first, uh, in the second verse, I all I uh, started singing on the last beat of the pre preceding measure of uh, the second verse. So it started on. You tell me that you love me. Now 
I'm here on the third verse. And then I'm gonna start singing. Again, that uh, deformed chords, uh, deshaped partial to the fourth and the fifth fret. Or alternate. Double bass. Let it ring into the next beat and then. One thing now, baby, I'm telling you. Used to be your man, now I'm your dog on the food, but I keep on trying. Right, and then we have a solo, the first solo. to add in the tap you will see under the tap a dotted line and a dotted line means of course I'm gonna use a slide uh, <coughs> so you can see clearly where to use the slide and not so the solo starts with a bend on the 8th fret 2nd string and again handy that to have your pinky ready for that ninth fret there. And then go to the A. And I took care, bar 26, that note, that it rings as long as possible. Again, that uh, partial chord where we're gonna fool around with it. Pinky. Picking index and middle at the same time and have a hammer on, a long hammer on. For our G chords. Then to that, mm, that diminished form where we change again with these two fingers and you will notice in the performance I work a bit with the uh, dynamics there and here you see although I'm playing with a slide you hear clearly two notes that, that not again with the picking finger resting after I picked it. Going to that A. Double bass, measure 32. Notice how I'm using the nail to get a more forceful sound. Bar 34, typical uh, Blind Blake from Polish Dark Blues. If you want to learn a nice song in open D tuning with lots of variation, go to Polish Dark Blues. It's without a slide. Temp, temp, middle, index. Temp, temp. Sorry. No. That bent on the third 
fret, fourth string is index and then tempo. No, it's index, index, sorry. And that's tempo. A different turnaround. And then we go into the fourth verse That's all right baby All right you say Don't drink my moonshine till it dries my blues and when I keep on trying So another another well variation of playing around with that D chord and moving it up and down That's all up and play open strings in between. Something like that. You can play around with that of course. And I like to follow with the guitar what my voice does, or the other way around. And this is really helpful. That's alright baby. Alright you say. stretch the vocals. You can hear that in the performance video. Because we have the time to do that. second solo which is with a slide sorry that's it So we're sliding bar 41 and again I'm using my picking finger to uh, mute after I picked it so we get nice divided notes. That's without muting. So third fret, fourth fret, seventh fret and attacking the, the 3.8 frets. Notice the country blues bass. And then fretting the second fret of the second string. And then the 8th fret. Adding the pinky there. That's gonna take a while to get that. That move sounds so simple, but you're going to have to practice that to get the timing right. That it's within the beats. You must see that that fourth beat starts with the open uh, fourth string. Notice the muting again. So, one more time. And here we have the 10th, 11th fret bending. And back 
to the seventh and eighth fret. Open and walking to the G chord. Are diminished. Again, third fret. Third, fourth fret, seventh fret. And back to our A chord. Change of the bass also. Back to the sixth string. For one B to that A, I'm just fretting the second fret, second string. Don't bother the rest. And for that measure, we're going into double time. So. is just for that measure and if you don't want to do that maybe learn it first a normal rhythm here I'm doing something different than in the tab but The reason why um, bar 52 you could play like this, which is tapped out, just that last beat I'm hitting down with my index and middle, and the reason is that I'm going to play that solo, that next solo, with my thumb, which gives you a very fat sound. Normally I would play that with index or middle, and, but I've seen Mike Dowling play that with uh, temp and I really like it. it's a cool sound and that's if I'm going down that last beat you see my temp is already on the on the first string almost in the neighborhood so that makes things easy uh, Bart 52 <laughs> Sliding to the 12th fret, going down to the 11th, it's important with those uh, slide forms at the 12th fret of not, well, aimlessly sliding at the 12th fret, this has, has really a melodic sequence. One more time. Let it ring into the next beat and pick it up with the open G string. And we're going to do that all, almost mechanically. did an upstroke bar 56 after that slide down from the 12th fret where I play the 4th, 3rd and 2nd string with a tap I rake up and mute and go into the G chord I, 
I'm not sure if I did it correctly in the performance video, but it should be mute. Mute with the right palm. And I'm slightly bending here that G chord with the third uh, fretted, the first string, third fret fret. You can always bend slightly, uh, has a nice sound. Yeah. Second verse, made that mistake a couple times. Um, so the fifth verse, bar 65. You say you don't leave me, leave me by myself. Maybe when you come back, I'll be loving someone else and you keep crying. Yes, keep on trying. So that bar 65, the last verse. different we don't do that at the ending we're using a sort of G chord here second second fret on the third string third fret on the fourth string and the fifth string on the second fret it's a triangular form Drives you. and then to the regular A blues away slide and we're gonna let that ring a couple uh, seconds. And then when I'm, I lift my um, muting finger and pick here. And if you go then to the 12th fret, it sounds like a, a sort of wavy feeling. So that's it for uh, Keep On Trying. Listen to Mike Dowling's versions. Uh, I listed them in the video description. And they're really cool. And, and you see, by the way, he recorded it twice on the CD and a live version, which is on YouTube. And uh, you will notice that there are quite a few different approaches that he does. Uh, he probably forgot how he recorded it on the CD and was winging it in the, in the live performance. All right, um, have fun with this tune. I had. <laughs>